In the previous video, I talked a lot about how the gallbladder stores bile that's made in the liver, and then upon the appropriate stimulus, which is really just triglycerides and fatty acids entering the small intestine, cholecystokinin, a hormone's released from the small intestine, it activates the gallbladder, and then the gallbladder is going to squirt bile ultimately through this ductwork into the duodenum. And the function of bile is to emulsify fats, which basically implies pulling them apart so that they have access to enzymes that can degrade them. And ultimately, remember, that's degrading these triglycerides, diglycerides, and monoglycerides into free fatty acids, which can then be absorbed. Now, free fatty acids are lipids. Okay? And it turns out that lipids are going to be much more difficult, or I should probably say complicated, to absorb than carbohydrates or amino acids. So the focus of this video, I'm going to ask a question. How would I digest DHA, an essential fatty acid? It wouldn't matter what fatty acid it is, but this is kind of a cool fatty acid with a lot of important functions in anti-inflammation. So how would I absorb this fatty acid? To answer that question, we first need to understand how amino acids and glucose or sugars are absorbed. Okay? So this absorption is going to be a function of the small intestine. Okay? Now remember, whenever molecules are in the intestinal lumen and they're degraded into their monomers, like glucose or amino acids, they're absorbed through the microvilli, the brush border, into these absorptive cells called enterocytes. Okay? So you'll have these glucose and sugars and amino acids in the enterocytes. And again, probably with some co-transport, some primary active transport, secondary active transport, all that, right? You're going to have these ultimately move into the capillary beds where they'll then move into the venous system. And specifically, it's going to be the capillary of the superior mesenteric vein because it's the superior mesenteric vein that ultimately is going to drain the contents of the small intestine. And from this, the superior mesenteric vein dumps into the hepatic portal vein, and that takes the amino acids and sugars directly to the liver. Okay? So really, the glucose, sugars, and amino acids have a direct transit to the liver through the superior mesenteric vein, then to the hepatic portal vein, and then to the liver. Now, in contrast, fatty acids are going to take a lot longer to get there. Okay? Fatty acids still have to be absorbed into these intestinal absorptive cells called enterocytes, but the fatty acids are going to be absorbed differently. In contrast, fatty acids are going to take a lot longer to get to the liver. They have a much more complicated process. So from the intestinal lumen, the fatty acids are still absorbed into these enterocytes, but rather than going into the venous system, they have to be packaged into large structures called chylomicrons. So this process is twofold. The fatty acids have to be remade into triglycerides. Okay, that's the first thing. And then the triglycerides are packaged as chylomicrons. We see a chylomicron up here. They're basically just lipoproteins. Okay, the outer surface of these are going to be protein, and then the inner parts are going to be the hydrophobic regions, which are the lipids. And the reason we have to do this is because fatty acids and triglycerides are hydrophobic. They're not soluble in the blood or the lymph. So we have to package them as a very large lipoprotein called a chylomicron. And then the chylomicron will then move into the circulation, but not into the venous system. Notice that the chylomicrons do not move into the superior mesenteric vein. Instead, they move into the lymphatic system, and they're specifically going to be absorbed directly by lymphatic structures called lacteals. All right, so here we have the brush border. Here's our villi, and of course it would have microvilli on it, right? And if we take a zoom in on one of these villi, we see here that, yes, there are capillaries of the superior mesenteric vein. This is actually the venule of the superior mesenteric vein, and this would be where amino acids and glucose and other sugars would be absorbed, and this venule would ultimately go into the venous system and take these to the liver. However, the chylomicrons, which are generated in this cell, actually move into the lacteals. Okay? This lacteals in green, typically when we talk about the lymphatic system, we're going to be talking about these green structures. And so this is our lacteal. Now from the lacteal, ultimately these uh, chylomicrons are going to move into just general lymphatic vessels. Okay? 
So the lacteals move the lipids, again, packaged as chylomicrons, into the lymphatic vessels, which we see a lymphatic vessel going this way. And then from the lymphatic vessels, which are going to be in this region right here, ultimately it's going to carry them upward, first of all toward this structure called the cisterna chyli. Okay? Now the cisterna chyli is really just a collecting region for lymph that's coming from the digestive organs. Okay? So here's our cisterna chyli. And from the cisterna chyli, if we follow this lymphatic vessel upwards, it's going to go behind the esophagus, behind uh, one of these primary bronchioles of the lungs, and then it's going to go through the thoracic duct and enter into the left subclavian vein. Okay, So cisterna chyli to the thoracic duct and then go into the venous blood supply through the left subclavian vein. So now we've got that chylomicron in the left subclavian vein. We know that would return to the heart eventually. The heart's going to eventually pump that into the arterial system, in which case then the chylomicron's going to be in the arterial system, and eventually it'll make its way to the liver. That is a really long route. But here's the nice thing. That chylomicron has some other important functions while it's going through the arterial system. So it turns out that once this chylomicron leaves the small intestine, at some point, really once it's in the blood, it's going to pick up some proteins from a very familiar lipoprotein called HDL. HDL is often called the good cholesterol. Okay? It's going to pick up some proteins, specifically APOC2 and APOE. It turns out that APOC2 and APOE are very important for the chylomicron because they allow the chylomicron to interact with peripheral cells such as adipose tissue, so adipocytes, and even skeletal muscle cells. Adipocytes and skeletal muscle cells can actually utilize fatty acids. And so when this chylomicron then comes in contact with one of these cells, okay, like an adipocyte as shown here, something in the adipocyte membrane can actually activate APOC2, which then activates a protein called lipoprotein lipase, which is also embedded in the membrane of this chylomicron. And the lipoprotein lipase is going to hydrolyze those triglycerides into free fatty acids. Remember, the chylomicron holds triglycerides. So if you want any free fatty acids from that, you have to break down the triglyceride. And those free fatty acids will then be taken up by the cell of interest. In this case, it's an adipocyte, but it could be a skeletal muscle cell. And then the remnants of that chylomicron are just going to be ultimately returned to the liver. Okay? So yes, it takes a very long time relative to glucose and amino acids for the fats to get back to the liver. But the nice thing is in the process of them circulating throughout the body, uh, they're going to be delivering those goodies, as someone once told me, those goodies to peripheral tissues such as adipocytes and skeletal muscle cells before they return to the liver. And once the chylomicron remnant returns to the liver, anything left over such as cholesterol, um, any remaining free fatty acids and fat-soluble vitamins, will be dealt with by the liver hepatocytes, in which case it can process those and then deliver them directly or their products to the rest of the body. Okay, So that is how lipids are absorbed. Again, very different from that of amino acids and sugars. Those get absorbed directly into the venous system and head directly to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. In contrast, the lipids have to be repackaged as triglycerides into large lipoproteins called chylomicrons, in which case those enter the lymphatic system through lacteals. Ultimately, they move into lymphatic vessels, up to the cisterna chyli, up to the thoracic duct, and into the left subclavian vein, which then gets them into the blood system. Okay? But in the process of going to the liver, which takes a while, they're going to be able to drop off those fatty acids at peripheral tissues, um, but only with those lipoproteins that become embedded in the membrane, through HDL. All right. So hopefully this video made sense to you. And that's really going to conclude our, our study of the small intestine. That was very complicated. Um, luckily, when we start talking about the large intestine, it's going to be a little bit simpler. That's what we're going to cover in the next video. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.